and uh, he pulled his pistol out and, and shot her in the back. Now at 10, a woman gunned down in a Mid-South clinic. And investigators say the man who pulled the trigger was running for state office. Kids and crime, the number of juveniles arrested in Memphis surges. The dangerous offenses landing youth behind bars. And casting call your chance to be in the premiere season of Bluff City Law right here on NBC. The big thing you need to do first. With all the day's breaking news, WMC Action News 5 at 10 starts now. The rain is finally moving out, but dangerous heat will be moving in. Good evening, I'm Joe Birch. And I'm Conti Anthony. All that moisture in the air will actually make the hot weather even more unbearable. Let's get over to Chief Meteorologist Ron Shelders. Ron. Yeah, that's right. We've got more extreme heat coming our way, but a few showers still linger on our first alert Doppler 5 radar. Most of that activity confined to parts of northern Mississippi. We've got some activity moving across and along Highway 278, right around the Memphis Metro few stray showers there as well, but I do expect this to be diminishing as we get into the evening and overnight hours. The one hour future cast showing that continuing to move off to the east. Now for your morning commute, we're still looking at a 30% chance of showers. Temperatures in the 70s, not bad. Here's what you need to know. We will see a few showers linger tonight. A drier pattern is emerging, but extreme heat and humidity are returning and another heat advisory tomorrow from noon until 8 p.m. A heat advisory from Memphis West into eastern Arkansas, south into northern Mississippi, Tipton County, Fayette County, you're included as well. I'll tell you how hot it's going to get and how hot it's going to feel, not only for tomorrow, but for the rest of the week. Your first alert forecast is just ahead. New information tonight about a man who opened fire inside a Marshall County, Mississippi clinic killing his estranged wife before killing himself. We have learned the gunman was also in the middle of a campaign for state office. WMC Action News 5's Kelly Cook with this story. Just after 10 a.m. Tuesday, shots rang out inside the Williams Medical Clinic in Potts Camp. Investigators say the shooter was a well-known figure in the community. Carl Robinson, currently running for a seat in the Mississippi House and owner of the Benton County Commission of Aging Adult Daycare. Deputies say his target Tuesday morning was his estranged wife. He came in the front door just like any other patient would do uh, and uh, he pulled his pistol out and, and shot her in the back. Dr. Kenneth Williams says he was shocked to learn that one of his newest hires was the one shot inside his clinic. So when I stepped in to, to help, you know, then uh, to do CPR, to do a code on it, it looked down and I said, that's LaToya. LaToya Thompson was hired two to three months ago as a receptionist. Despite Williams and others' efforts, Thompson did not survive. Investigators say Robinson shot through the welcome desk window, then jumped over the counter and died from an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. His wife were in the process of a divorce. His wife was lying on the floor near his body. Marshall County Sheriff Kenny Dickerson says the couple were disputed over the custody of the couple's child. Yes, she has a son, and um, he's little, just a happy little boy, you know, and she was a wonderful, just dedicated mother to him. Thompson's cousin says she's in disbelief, but asked for everyone for prayers for both families and the little boy who lost both of his parents Tuesday. Kelly Cook, WMC Action News 5. New tonight, a Shelby County grand jury has indicted an Arkansas woman in the shooting death of a Memphis pastor. WMC Action News 5's Joyce Peterson joins us now live with new details revealed in a three-count indictment against Latosha Daniels. Joyce? Yeah, Joe, 40-year-old Latasha Daniels now faces three felony indictments, including first-degree murder and attempted first-degree murder for the April 4th shooting of 36-year-old Brodus Perry and his 42-year-old wife, Tabitha. Perry was the executive pastor at Mississippi Boulevard Christian Church. Now, Mrs. Perry told investigators she let Daniels into their Collierville apartment that night because they knew Daniels from their time living in Little Rock. The two women talked for about 30 minutes before Pastor Perry arrived home. Daniels then spoke with the couple for another 10 minutes before saying she had to leave. The indictment says as she walked toward the door, Daniels pulled a Ruger 9mm out of her jacket, shouted, you broke my heart, and started firing. Pastor Perry was shot multiple times in the head and the torso. Tabitha Perry was shot in the shoulder. Now, Daniels, according to the indictment, was reloading her gun when Collierville police arrived on the scene. 
She is a licensed social worker specializing in anger management. She pleaded not guilty and waived her right to a preliminary hearing in May. Live in studio, I'm Joyce Peterson. Joe, back to you. Retired Supreme Court Justice John Paul Stevens died tonight at age 99. Appointed by President Gerald R. Ford in 1975, Stevens served on the court for 35 years. A World War II veteran and a soft-spoken, bow-tie-wearing Republican, Stevens ultimately became champion of the court's liberal wing. Among other, among other opinions, writing dissenting opinions in Bush versus Gore and Citizens United, where Stevens wrote a 90-page objection to the right of corporations to spend freely on elections. Looking ahead, the Memphis journalist released from ICE custody is set to speak tomorrow. Manuel Duran will be holding a news conference with his attorneys at Latino Memphis. You'll remember Duran spent more than a year in federal custody after being arrested while covering a protest downtown. He believes he was targeted because of his reporting. Memphis police say a serial robber is on the run in Fraser. Investigators released this video taken Monday afternoon at a Captain D's on Fraser Boulevard. You can see a man come in, pull a revolver from his waistband and demand money at gunpoint. Police say he had a chin strap beard and wore a purple scarf, purple hat and sleeveless jean jacket. Investigators say the same man could be responsible for other robberies in the area. A new challenge for Memphis police tonight. Officers say juvenile arrests surged since this time last year. WMC Action News 5's Janice Broach with the recent crimes behind this spike, including an attempted kidnapping in East Memphis. Janice? Well, Memphis police say arrests of juveniles have jumped significantly over this time last year. A staggering 68% more arrests of juveniles. It's kind of a quiet neighborhood. I mean, there's been a few break-ins here and there, mostly vehicles, uh -huh. uh, some houses, but nothing to that extreme. Dean Franklin and his neighbors saw the police in this East Memphis neighborhood at 1030 on July 8th. Two juveniles, 16 and 15 years old in a stolen Mercedes, are accused of trying to kidnap a woman at gunpoint from her driveway as she took groceries out of her car. This woman, who did not want to be identified, was walking her dog at the time. In broad daylight, it was very unexpected. It's pretty freaky. The victim managed to get away. Neighbors say when she refused to get in the car, she started screaming as they threatened to shoot her. The 15 and 16 year old were caught and charged with aggravated robbery, kidnapping, and the 16 year old also charged with theft of a car. Last Thursday, a 15 year old and 12 year old were in a vehicle handling a firearm when the 15 year old was shot. The 12 year old was charged with reckless endangerment. And in March, a father and son were shot by an 11 year old in their home. The 14 year old son died. It was my firstborn, and it was just, uh, he changed my life. I just miss him. You know, I'd give anything to have him back. The 11 year old was arrested and charged. He will not be tried as an adult, but Dean Franklin knows what he hopes happens to the 15 and 16 year old who are accused of trying to rob and kidnap the East Memphis woman. Well, they weren't out stealing candy, yeah. so they should be charged as adults. Now, police say there's a, a combination of reasons for this increase in the arrests of juveniles. More juveniles actually involved in crimes and more actual arrests. Live, Janice Broach, WMC Action News 5. Love City Law is looking for extras to appear in the new Memphis-based NBC legal drama. According to a Facebook it post from the Memphis and Shelby County it Film Commission, <laughs> On Location Casting is looking for extras to appear in the show starting this Saturday. You have to be at least 18 years of age. You have to have a valid ID. Extras will be paid $75 for working an eight-hour shift. You do have to apply first, and we'll link you to the details at our website, wmcactionnews5.com. The U.S. Ambassador to Japan is stepping down to run for a U.S. Senate seat here in Tennessee. The State Department announced 59-year-old Bill Haggerty resigning from the diplomatic post later this month. He will run as a Republican, seeking the seat being left behind by Senator Lamar Alexander. Haggerty previously served as the Economic Development Commissioner in Tennessee, also has strong backing from President Trump and was in charge of presidential appointments during the White House transition. 
Still ahead of 10 in Atlanta, hotels shut down as officials investigate a deadly disease. And it's an issue guests in the Mid-South have faced before. And more children being bullied. The surprising study find the places other than school, it's happening. This broadcast is sponsored by Floyd Fire Extinguisher and Steam Cleaning. You're watching WMC Action News 5 at 10. There's been an arrest in the murder of a well-known Louisiana civil rights activist. A convicted sex offender who lived on her property is now behind bars. Reed Binion with the way the Baton Rouge community is remembering the life lost. <laughs> Said it went home, did what she loved to do, help people. A celebration of life, a life that many considered to be larger than life. We just got to pray, and then we got to do what I'd say he wanted us to do, and that is come together in peace. The murder of 75-year-old civil rights activist Sadie Roberts-Joseph rocking the tight-knit community of Baton Rouge. Roberts-Joseph, best known for founding the Baton Rouge African American Museum, was found dead in the trunk of a car, suffocated to death. I'm heartbroken that our community has lost such a kind and selfless soul in such a violent, tragic manner. She was a part of the fabric of Baton Rouge, and that is why you see so many people concerned about her death. Police say her alleged killer is a convicted sex offender who served time for the rape of an eight-year-old girl, rented a property from Roberts Joseph, and that his motive to kill might have been that he owed her two months in back rent. All my mother ever wanted was for this community to come together. It's ironic that that happened in, her, in death. Reed Binion, WMC Action News 5. The final moments before a deadly plane crash in Texas were caught on nearby security cameras. Investigators say the flight was taking off from the Addison Airport, but started to veer left before flipping over and crashing into a nearby hangar. All 10 people aboard were killed. Were killed. Investigators haven't determined what caused this crash, but the pilots did report a problem with the engine. An Atlanta hotel has been closed down while health officials try to pinpoint cases of Legionnaire's disease. Five cases of the disease have now been confirmed in people who visited the Sheraton Hotel in downtown Atlanta. You'll remember it's the same disease that sickened nine people at the guest house at Graceland here in Memphis two years ago. Legionella bacteria can spread through mist from water systems like air conditioners or swimming pools, but the exact source of the bacteria in the Atlanta hotel has not been tracked down. A new federal report finds one fifth of middle and high school students in this country say they're being bullied. The survey looked at the 2016 2017 school year, but found the bullying isn't always happening on campus. 15% of the bullying victims say it happens online. Girls were also more likely to be victims of bullying, which include things like insults or being talked about in rumors. An Oxford police officer has been honored for saving a person's life. Officer Coney was given the department's life-saving award. Police say she was responding to a medical emergency and found the patient not breathing. She performed CPR and revived the patient who was then taken to the hospital. Well, our rain has moved out of the Mid-South after a gully washer today, but it left major messes in southwestern Arkansas. Take a look at the water surrounding buildings and homes. This is Howard County, Arkansas. Some drivers tried to get across flooded roadways, had to be rescued instead. As much as 20 inches of rain fell in some places, washing out railroad tracks. There were also flooding reports at City Hall in Nashville, Arkansas, and that forced the jail in Nashville, Arkansas to be evacuated. Interesting note on that precipitation. It occurred last night and today. Yeah, 15 to 20 inches in that area. Now, three day total here in Memphis was 5.09 inches. And we're still dealing with a little rain right now, primarily along and south of I 40. Most of it's confined to northern Mississippi. The remnants of Barry still making its way through that tropical moisture filtering into the area. But this whole system is making a push to the east. And that's why we're now seeing the eastward progression of this activity. Some heavy downpours, a little thunder, a little lightning out there. But this should move on out tonight. And I think as we get into the day tomorrow, we're going to be in for a much drier pattern. There's 
There's one little disturbance I'll talk more about in just a moment, but in the meantime, we've got drier air back to the west. Still a lot of moisture at the surface, however, and with that in place, well, we're going to see the evaporation. That's going to make things steamy, and in the coming days, it's going to feel much hotter than the actual temperatures will reach. Now, let's take a look at future casts with temperatures and precipitation between now and about 8 o'clock. Most of this rain in northern Mississippi just eases on out of here. There may be a shower in the areas we're waking up, but really, I think more clouds than anything. Temperatures right around the mid and upper 70s. By midday, we're in the mid to upper range of the 80s in the area. There could be some heavier showers. The remnants, again, still working their way east, but it's going to be more likely along and east of the Tennessee River Valley. Some of that moisture could spread a little farther to the west as we get into the afternoon hours, but I think it will better be confined again to northeastern Mississippi. Most of it's going to be hot and muggy. By 8 p.m., however, I'm looking at another disturbance coming down. This too, in association with that counterclockwise swirl with Barry, that could drop a little precipitation into northeastern Arkansas. It will be weakening as it enters the area. Future cast shows it just falling apart by the time it gets here, but we're going to watch that closely. Right now we're at 77. There's a little bit of light rain at Memphis International Airport, but we picked up the bulk of it early in the day today. Two and a quarter inches of rain fell. This was the rainiest day of the three day period. It's going to be mostly cloudy tonight. We'll keep an isolated shower or two in the mix. 30% chance 73 our overnight low. Then tomorrow there still will likely be a few isolated showers in the area. Again, a 30% chance, but it's primarily going to be warm and muggy. We're looking at a high of 90 degrees and it will feel even hotter. As a matter of fact, heat indices will likely reach 101 by 1 o'clock and hover right around 103, 104 for the afternoon hours. There is a heat advisory that will be in effect for Memphis and Shelby County, Tipton, Fayette, northern Mississippi, along and west of 55, and all of eastern Arkansas tomorrow. We can see the even warmer temperatures back into, or the warmer heat indices back into east Arkansas, and it's going to remain steamy for the rest of the week. Keep in mind, a lot of moisture on the ground. That's all going to be evaporating. We'll hit 91 on Thursday, 92 Friday and Saturday, 91 again on on Sunday, but I think heat index values are going to hover right around 105 or above. Our rain chances after tomorrow only about 10 to 20 percent. We see a little bit of an uptick as we get into Monday. Slightly cooler next Monday, but I think there may be a few more clouds in the area. It's still going to be steamy in the area, though. I like to see those 80s, though. That will be nice. Yes. Indeed, with the golf tournament coming mm -hmm. too. Nice to have milder temperatures. Still ahead at 10. A need for speed. The Tesla topping electric car that comes with a price tag to match. Hey folks, Memphis Night on 1 FC gets back in action Tuesday night against Nashville, coming off its biggest scoring outburst of its inaugural United Soccer League season. The 4-1 win over Hartford Athletic, a welcome change over the previous four games where the club produced only two goals and three losses and a tie. The lack of production in part by a breakup in the roster with midfielders Dwayne Muckett and Leston Paul called up to their national team, Trinidad and Tobago, and Cam Lindley training with the USU 23 squad. Now, if they're all back, Muckett says he expects the scoring to continue. You know, we were starting to get some momentum. Um, the team, one team was playing together. You know, we got a great result against um, Hartford in the Cup. I know, and then I had to leave the national team. But um, we go into the season knowing that these times come around. So it's just uh, try to get back. To where we left, to where I left off, you know. Hopefully, I can get some more goals and contribute um, positively towards the team. I love to listen to him talk. Maquette has two goals and an assist in 14 matches with Memphis this season. And what has become a tradition at this point will continue tomorrow's 9-0 FC match. Before each game, a different person has smashed a guitar on the field. Tomorrow, before Memphis 9-0 FC takes on Nashville, Penny Hardaway, he'll smash the guitar. In addition to the guitar smash, the first 1,000 fans will get a free T-shirt. The match starts tomorrow, 7.30 p.m., downtown at The Zone. What a night Monday was for former University of Memphis pitcher Jonathan Bolin after getting picked in the, by the Kansas City Royals in the second round, number 58 overall. Bolin has been toiling away in Class A with the Wilmington Blue Rocks. 
Bowlington rocks Carolina with the first no-hitter of his life. Bowling's a big and it's 6'6 six, and 262 pounds. He ends the game in style with a strikeout in a 3-0 victory. A throwing error in the second is the only thing that kept it from being a perfect game. Bowling threw just 98 pitches, 63 of them for strikes. He got an amazing 13 ground ball outs and thanked his defense for making the no-hitter possible. Bowling, who prepped at Bartlett High School, says he once had a no-hitter going into the seventh inning of a game when he was a Memphis Tiger. He also had a no-no through five earlier this season as a pro. Now he's part of Wilmington Blue Rocks and Memphis sports history. Congratulations to Bowling. On the diamond tonight in Class AAA to Memphis Redbirds trying to make it two wins in a row at Round Rock. Well, they can't do it. They fall 4-1. The Birds not back home till next Tuesday. That's against New Orleans at AutoZone Park. And upriver in uh, St. Louis, the Redbirds paired Cardinals Hosting the Pittsburgh Pirates at Bush Stadium. Game tied 1 1 in the ninth run. It's the quarters for the Buckles. Colin Moran slapped to right. Colton Wong knocks it down, but can't get it out of his glove. Everybody's safe. The run scores. Pirates right now lead it in the ninth inning. The score is 3 to 1. Pittsburgh over St. Louis. And that's it for sports. We'll be right back. So you say the really bad weather is out of the way now. This is just that weather that's just annoying enough to mess up your hair. Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly, oh, yeah. except Joe's here. But uh, no, it never moves. Maybe people. a few Literally intermittent showers move. left. It's really the heat and humidity that's going to come back over the next several days. Just use caution. Stay hydrated. Check on your elderly friends, neighbors. Don't forget about your pets. It doesn't and move. It's all real. It's, never it's real. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. See you tomorrow. Stream WMC Action News 5 for free on WMCActionNews5.com, our new Roku, and Amazon Fire TV channels.